Hello everyone, this is my look at the LEGO Ninjago Keeper's Village set. The set features one big structure and terrain build that's actually done in three sections and then you get five figures. Let's take a quick look at how this island is shaped up just in its default form and then we'll get down and look at some details and also see a few things that can transform a little bit in terms of its shape, but I wanted you to see its overall shape with everything together like this. And there's a lot of detail in here. It's not done in a way that's particularly boring, you know, it's definitely not done in a traditional linear way. There's not a lot of rectangular shaping to it whatsoever. There are a lot of interesting angles that eh, make it interesting, you know, or at the very least make it different. And I will say that it does feel at least uh, at a cursory level, like it is fairly accessible and easy to play with from different angles. Traps are a recurring theme throughout this set. So from the moment you set foot on the island itself from this little landing beach area, this is where the water is, the rest of it is intended to represent spaces that are inland, you may be interested in the foliage. Like, is this something that I can eat? Is that lettuce right there? Or you may ignore it altogether. Either way, if you grab it or you step on it, I'll just use a random minifigure here to demonstrate, you will find yourself <laughs> being introduced to the very first trap of the place. This is actually fairly effective how it works and you know it's easy to do. It it just works. It integrates in well and if you don't see it you don't see it except for the little bit of chain there. But I mean that kind of makes sense to me. The next little booby trap tricky area is right here. I mean if you see something that has a skull on it you might not want to step on it. In this case it's a it's a you know little bit of shaky ground shaky ground you might fall off there however this isn't that bad right like this okay it's a little bit shaky but what about it well it does get worse because there's a shooter built in over here the idea is that this would go off automatically unfortunately they did not set up something in this set so that it will go off automatically so you have to fire it manually yourself from back here i think that's okay but you know it, it's trying to integrate a couple of things. There's also the possibility of falling off from here into the little spike traps over on this side, you know, if you lose your balance. So that's not a good thing. Also, if you go up the stairs over here, that's not a good thing if you fall off the edge. Foliage around here, you can see, I mean, the, the build of this is completely inconsistent to good effect. Uh, the, the build process did not feel boring at all to me, but I personally didn't enjoy it that much just because progress was very very slow and that's that's more of a me thing than a it thing let's look at the stairway instead so this allows you to go all the way up straight to the top where the throne is and the throne has some spikes around it's done a little bit differently with the way that they styled this up one sticker right there and is that pushed down i mean oh it wasn't there we go now we're good uh yeah I mean, yeah it's a throne We'll take a look at this whole totem setup here with the paintings on it. Those use stickers. These were built nicely. They went together pretty quickly and you can see that you can you know, change the articulation, change the, the posing just a little bit of the, of the arms because they all have ball joints on them. And then at the very top is the, the amulet, the MacGuffin for this, uh, this particular season or this particular part of the series. And we'll get back to that as well. But let's see, what else do we have going on here? We've got a little bit of flame here and then over on this side it's going to take us back down to the ground that's okay big old uh, sculpture you know an ancient sculpture that's made of stone but it also has some some lava that's pouring out of it it's like this is part of a a small slow burn volcano that's just leaking out a little bit this is nice how this is done unfortunately they included only one of those power blast pieces in that regular trans orange but i like it and just spilling off to the side it's also spilling some liquid hot magma down from the, the tongue of this, is it a gator or is it a serpent? It's a reptilian thing here. That actually looks pretty nice. Now, if you have the ability to control fire or lava, you may be able to get in here, but I don't recommend it. It's not a good place to go. We'll see that from the other side. The central entrance takes you into an unknown cave, but that actually is a good place to go, as we will see again around the other side. But before we got there, I wanted you to see the overall shape of it and also the fact that there's a shield here, which is a very nice printed piece and an extra spear. Looking around the back, I wanted to quickly confirm for you how this mechanism works. It's very simple for that trap. And this is the actuator for the little uh, uh, tile shooter, triple tile shooter. But you see there's nothing else going on over on this side of it. So most of the action occurs in the, the center section of this that's built up. Now I did mention 
uh, there we go, that this was a good place to go right here down the center because if you get into this cave, they're cooking up a nice fish and vegetable stew. So that's really cool. You can see it's on the fire right there, a little fire pit. Yes, excellent. Definitely want to try some of that out. Hopefully it is uh, spiced up nicely, you know, not too bland. Now inside of there, there is an oar or paddle to use with a boat, but this is actually a jail cell. And that's what you would get into if you went through the mouth of that stone beast with the lava tongue on it. So you probably don't want to get yourself into jail. However, if you're inside and you have the ability to make it through the rock face and also through the lava that's going down the tongue of that beast, then you can maybe get yourself out of the jail cell. Now this opening is large enough for people to get our huge figure hands in there and pose minifigures. However, all of this opens up quite nicely to give you even better access and to change the shape of everything as well. So this is how you get much better access to the jail cell and as the bone and uh, bone and board, I guess, door there. Inside there's just enough space for one person and I'm assuming that's a chamber pot over there. And to get the whole escape action to work simply, you just push down on this leaf and it pushes against a little lift arm on the side that opens that up. So that's how you would get out potentially if you're not being rescued from the outside. Meanwhile, swinging this open like this gives you more access to walk around here and you know, it just kind of turns it more into an interior uh, cave system, you know, where you can really travel about, including going all the way out this end. There's actually an opening right there. So a uh, figure could squeeze through that space. And if you don't want all of this connected, you can easily just unclip that. So this becomes its own miniature island. You can put it wherever you want, but that's how that works out. The totem setup is able to rock back and forth slightly to give it a sense of being alive, but it really does come alive. All of these will pop right off together like so. And then so I do this with one hand. Yep. They each come apart and they become individual little totem monsters, little, little, little guardian beasts. These are, these are kind of cool. Just individually, this set comes with one of these sets of the, uh, the plastic blade pieces that have been done in a number of colors now. White is just the newest to represent bone or something like that. I uh, like this one. It's got the, it's got the whiskers on it. It's got the, the lightning ears, if you will. But yeah, these just kind of hop around. They're intended to be made of stone, but they come to life. Mm, I probably like this one personally the least, but that's totally a personal thing. Who cares what I think about it? And yeah, this is my second favorite. He's got a funny face. I like the teeth, especially. <laughs> it's my favorite part. Also, he has the tiny little, little daggers that he carries, which just seems more funny to me. There's more comic relief in this, even though it's actually a serious, uh, I won't say enemy, but a thing to battle against. And finally, here's just what the island looks like with the totem dudes <laughs> removed. With the minifigures, I decided to look at the Islanders first rather than the ninja, just because, well, the Islanders seem a little bit more interesting this time around to me as figures, especially Chief Mamatis there on the left. I mean, that headgear piece is dual molded and I mean, that looks like a lot of work. It's just some really, really fine production work, not just with the dual molding itself, which Lego is very, very good at, but also the print on the forehead emblem part there with the, the gold and then the printing for the torso and the hips and the legs. That's all good. It's, it's well done. On the right is Thunderkeeper or a Thunderkeeper. I believe there are multiple of them. And yeah, that's also done pretty well. No dual molding there or anything, but you know, it looks pretty good from the front. I also wanted you to see what this weapon looks like. So it's got that purple, uh, purple lightning on top of it. I actually think that Chief Mamatis looks better if we do the the side, the side cape kind of thing. I don't know, just, just to me. This is a soft cloth type cape. Uh, get out of the way, get out of the way. There we go. <laughs> so I, I'm able to do this. I'm able to pop it up so you can see that very nice print on the back of that torso, which again has more gold in it. So you can see the shine on it. But yeah, it's nicely done. This is like a, it's almost a Fabuland brown uh, color. It's an uncommon color. Looking underneath these well done helmet pieces, one of them has an alternate face. 
good to see. This one doesn't because they wanted to have the option to show that without a a cover, uh, without a headgear piece that covers everything up. The ninja in this set are Jay, Kai, and Cole, and they're using weapons that are, uh, I guess, in a couple of cases, somewhat inspired to uh, inspired by stuff that they've used before, but not necessarily. So this is a, a chained weapon. I forget the name of this type of weapon, but it has a single blade at the end of it, a very dangerous thing to wield, I have to say. They all use the same blade within them, so Kai is just dual, weld, uh, dual wielding a couple of those just by themselves, and then Cole has it integrated into his pole-based weapon there. Uh, when it comes to the prints for these, I personally like the fact that Cole's print is different from the others. His, you know, his armor is very different, from from the gi and gear of the other uh, the other two, but I don't like the look of the print itself as much. It just looks a little bit plain to me. It is printed with some very very matte gray in there, which is nice. But I, don't know, I just like the others. They they look just generally speaking better. I need to take a bunch of stuff off here. There we go. Now we can see the alternate faces, and we can see the full prints on the backs of the torsos. Much better. Most of the time, you don't get to see that stuff. And even in this video here, you're only going to be seeing it for a matter of seconds. That's, that seems like a shame. All that, all that work almost going to waste. But at least it is good stuff. And there are their, their angry and fighting faces. Here are the leftover pieces, including a full volley worth of extra tiles for the tile shooter. And the number of stickers in this set felt conservative, if anything. All right, so I paid $50.50 US for this set. And it has over 600 pieces. Okay, so the price to part ratio looks very nice, as is very common these days for Ninjago stuff. And I have to say the price to volume of stuff ratio feels pretty good as well. Which actually surprises me after having gone through the build process because as I built this, I felt like, man, there are a lot of one by ones here. There are a lot of tiny pieces, barb pieces, dark gray, one by one cheese slopes, uh, modified plates with clip on side. It's a lot of little stuff, a lot of small plates. But when you put it all together, it feels like a decent amount of stuff. I mean, just think about it. If this was a Star Wars set, it would cost $70 easily. And it probably wouldn't be as good as this. Probably wouldn't be as detailed or as playable. Um, I will say that I'm not particularly impressed at the end of the day with this, 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 <laughs> the ability to, to transform it a little bit. Uh, it doesn't really do much. Oh, forgot to close the door over here. Always close the door to the, close the bone and board door to your, to your prison when you're done with it, right? Uh, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't do that much because, I mean, ultimately you can still access the action feature even when it's fully closed up over here and you just get basically access to walk through here. So it opens up a little bit of extra space. It doesn't do as much as I expected. It's good to be able to detach areas. So all this being its own thing allows you to put this in a different place. Like this can be at the other side of the island now. If you've got a cove in there, that's what I've just done. I've just created a cove. There's a lagoon right here now. So you have to swim across or, you know, bring in some more pieces or some other other sets and turn this into something larger and make it into a, a bigger a bigger adventure for your your folks who landed there to go through you know come up with more traps but uh, yeah that that doesn't add value doesn't add more stuff to it it's it's just useful design I would say uh, but still all of this together feels like enough stuff feels like they didn't put in too much detail in spite of what the the build felt like feels playable you know feels appropriate for many ages a little shaker deck over here isn't all that useful honestly uh to me forgot to show you that one leaf can turn so there that opens up unveils unveils the the shooter but then you still have to shoot the the thing itself you know you have to depress the plunger yourself um this i really like you you build this stack right at the end. This is the very last thing that you end up doing, but it adds a lot. It adds all that verticality when it's just placed there. It adds a lot of color as well, and the ability to take these apart and use them as individual characters. That's good. That's definitely good. The biggest problem that I have with this set is that 
it suggests, it suggests that this is a full versus playset. You know, it's Ninja versus the Evil Islanders. Fortunately, if you watch the show, I don't want to do too many spoilers here, for folks who have not been able to watch the show. It's just like four episodes. It's really short. This whole island excursion thing is very, very short. I don't want to spoil it too much, but I will confirm that the Islanders are not evil. They're not following the, the old evil Islander trope. Thank goodness. I was worried about that when I first saw this. Like, are we really going there? We're not. And they didn't. So that that's actually cool. But I, I like I like their style and everything. And man, Mamatis' uh, headdress piece there, that is good stuff. That is really, really good. I also like that color of cape too. It's just, it's just different. It feels special. So if you want to see how this all went together, if you want to feel what I felt as I put this together, all the little pieces and how slow it felt like it went together, you can see my pure build, right? It's done in just real time with just the sounds of putting the pieces together. No, no talking, no, none of this <laughs> and no music, you know, no special effects or anything. So you can go through it, just throw it on in the background and, you know, an hour and a half or I think it even took longer than that. Uh, later, it'll, it'll be done. Or if you want to see the entire process together in one sitting uh, relatively quickly, just the whole thing as an overview. I have the speed build up as well. So check out one of those if you want to. They are on their own separate channels where they belong. I'll keep working to bring you more reviews here. I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for watching.